Hi. Uh, I'm Elena, and I'm going to tell you a bit about the Standby Task Force. The Standby Task Force was launched at the International Conference of Crisis Mappers last year. Uh, its aims are to uh, provide uh, predictable support to crisis, ma cri crisis mapping support to response organizations and to develop a model for volunteer engagement. One year on, the Standby Task Force has 700 volunteers from over 60 different countries. There are students, engineers, doctors, NGO workers. Some of them have experience in volunteering for humanitarian organizations, some others don't. When a volunteer joins the SBTF, they're asked to join a team depending on their skills. They're also given the opportunity to train and gain new skills. These trainings and coordination happen via Ning site and over Skype. Um, we use a variety of tools, uh, including Ushahidi, Tomnod, OpenStreetMap, and ArcGIS. SPTF volunteers have contributed to many crisis mapping projects. The SPTF can also deploy in support of a response organization that needs a crisis map. In an SPTF deployment, uh, it's the team coordinators from within the SPTF that organize workflows and teams, instead of the volunteers joining an, an exercise that already exists. We've had seven deployments to date, and I want to tell you a little bit more about one of them. On March 1st of 2011, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs asked for the SPTF to uh, launch a crisis map in support of humanitarian preparedness in Libya. There was a considerable amount of information being shared over social media uh, in, in, in Libya, um, and within four hours the Libya crisis map was up, and there was a team monitoring this media. There was also a team that started creating a who does what where database for OCHA. Um, on the fifth day of the deployment, uh, the UN asked for the map to be made public. And I wouldn't be, do justice in an ignite to the security and ethics concerns that this raised, but there will be a self-organized session on operational security tomorrow where some of these issues will be addressed. Uh, the SPTF was only supposed to run this, uh, this map for one week, but ended up running it for four weeks. By the end of this period, 150 U uh, UN volunteers and a number of UN staff had been trained to run the platform, and 1,430 reports had been uploaded. We certainly lo learned a lot internally about this, uh, about it during this deployment, and you can see some of our lessons learned in our after-action report. But the deployment also raised a number of questions about the integration of crisis mapping into the UN. These are questions that I'm familiar with because I used to work for a UNDP project that does crisis mapping. Um, and th the main thing that I learned in that project is that if you don't do some analysis of the data in a crisis map, a lot of people aren't going to use that information. So the question is then, what do people want to know? The answer that we got during the Lib Libya crisis map from OCHA is to keep it simple. People, responders, want to make sense of what's going on. So we classified the information in the Libya crisis map into three overall categories, responses, needs, and events. And we, help, we, we use that categorization to identify priority areas and priority issues, as well as pointing out emerging areas and emerging issues that responders might want to look into. There certainly was a lot of interest in this map. Uh, WFP, OCHA, the IRC, the Red Cross, all reported that they were using the map. Um, but the question to us is, how exactly was this map being used? And this is a question that, as a community, we need to start addressing. It's clear that volunteers are very good at collecting quality information, but it's not so clear how and whether that information is then being used by responders on the ground. We say that crisis maps uh, support situational awareness, but to what purpose? Can we enhance existing information management pro uh, products as we did with the three Ws? Can we and should we be feeding back the information we're collecting to the public as responders? How, uh, who has access to the tools that we use to collect information? And how is that biasing the analysis that we produce? Is the fact that something is reported more often, does that mean that it's also more important? Um, the Libya crisis map wasn't a perfect use case, uh, but a lot of the questions it raises do point to the, the opportunities for collaboration with crisis mapping volunteers in, uh, in complex political emergencies. And uh, uh, a little while ago, the SPTF also launched a satellite team to basically microtask the tagging and analysis of satellite imagery. In the past three months, the satellite team has partnered with uh, Digital Globe and Tomnod uh, to, to uh, work on projects with Amnesty International and with UNHCR. This is another example of how uh, the SPTF is acting as a laboratory for collaboration between crisis mapping volunteers and response organizations. And a lot of the questions that these deployments raise come down to this conversation in between people who launch crisis maps and response organizations. The crisis mappers are saying, uh, you know, what do you want the crisis map to do? The responders are saying, I don't know, what can a crisis map really do for me? 
And um, I just wanted to leave you with a, a couple of quotes from Gregory Bateson, who's my, one of my favorite uh, uh, anthropologists, general thinkers. He's famous for saying that the map is not the territory, which in many ways uh, speaks to what the SBTF and other crisis mapping initiatives do. We make an interpretation of the territory of information in support of humanitarian response and crisis recovery. This is a less famous quote of his, uh, which I like very much because it basically talks about the risks and opportunities of working with information. And if you want to uh, meet a few more of our volunteers who couldn't make it to this conference, then please take a look at this crowd map that we've put up where they're telling you what they're doing over, the, over these days while we're at this conference. Thank you.